Greetings, and welcome to another video from oduclass.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at the reporting engine. It's a new Odoo 8. Uh, go over uh, a little bit about some of the older reporting that's now, uh, I wouldn't say, I'd say it's obsolete. Uh, it's still supported, but it's uh, depreciated, meaning that it's not going forward going to be the new report mechanism. And so the new report mechanism is going to use QWeb. And um, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to um, go down and remind you, this is pretty much still a, a fresh version of Odoo with um, just the sales management installed. Um, but I'm going to remind you that um, you're going to want to go into users and administrator or whatever user you're using. You'll probably, for this, be using the administrator account. And make sure that your technical features is, is set on. And if you need to, shift refresh to see uh, the change of, of your technical settings. Then um, you should have a, a reporting, a reports area down here. That If you click on that, it's going to list all the reports. And you'll notice it lists over here the type. And it, some of the reports... Um, under report type here are still the older style. This like uh, one here that says RML PDF. That was um, the older Odoo 7 style. And um, if we go and scroll down, you'll see that some of them uh, are are in even in alternative styles. Like they'll say RML S S K W. That they're not um, in the in the PDF format there. But um, the new format's called QWeb, and, and they don't show that it's QWeb here, they just show PDF. So we're going to use this uh, quotation sales order, because this will be a common uh, document that, that you'll be asked to modify if you're working with Odoo, if you're uh, using this for your own company. There's a good chance you're not going to want to use the quotation the way it looks out of the box. So let's see how it looks, and I'm going to show you a little trick I use when I'm, when I'm working with different... Uh, parts of Odoo. Rather than having to switch between forms a lot, I'll um, go up here like under sales and right click and say open the link in a new window. So I have a, a new tab. So I have a new tab here that um, I can go down to sales orders or quotations. We have some from our previous video already in here. So let's just pick a quotation here so we can see what this report looks like. Um, and when I hit print You'll notice that it uh, saves it down here, um, and depending on your web browser, you might get a little different behavior on how it downloads your report, but once it does, you'll have a way you know, to open it. And now there's our standard report out of the box uh, from Odoo. Now, um, I'm not really complaining here, but that's not exactly going to be the, uh, you know, the look of a report that's going to be eye-popping. And so, most naturally, you're going to want to probably change this to look uh, like your uh, quote or, or to look like something that would represent your business. Um, and that's going to really depend a lot subjectively on, on the type of business you're working in. If you're a, a, a design and arts, uh, like a graphic design company, this type of invoice that you see right here would most certainly probably not work for you very long uh, if, when you send invoices like this out to your customers because they're gonna, uh, an architectural firm for example uh, anyone that has to have a high degree of, of professional quality in their end product uh, in terms of look and presentation you're gonna want that on your invoices I'd say to a certain degree every company is gonna uh, uh, want this but it's easier for someone who's um, uh, to get by with an invoice that's that's maybe not great looking if they're in certain industries but um, without a doubt you're going to want to change this. One of the changes that I get uh, right away from people is, uh, in the US market at least is this uh, degree sign here for quotation. Um, it's just not real typical um, to have and so making little changes like this is how we're going to start. We're going to show you how you can do that. Um, a little bit of warning um, the changes that you make inside of the database are through um, the installation of Odoo without creating a Python module or without creating documents in modules that you install. Those changes are going to have a certain brittleness and 
uh, lack of permanency to them meaning that I have had instances where you can lose your your custom modifications that you make in the database if you don't have some kind of alternative uh, way to, to, to log them and track them and, and at least organize your changes um, you could get in a situation where you have to do an update across all your modules and you actually lose um, the changes to, to that you make to report so um, like pretty much any system backup frequently make frequent backups in the cases of of doing report changes if it's um, a one-off report for um, that you don't think you're going to reuse ever that it's not necessarily a bad design strategy to make uh, those changes inside of, of, of the database considering that there's no reusability that will ever come of it um, but I would say uh, having clear documentation and clear uh, guidelines for uh, how you manage changes to reports and keeping a, a, those uh, reports in that code in a, in a separate well-documented place uh, is certainly not a bad idea. To, in fact, uh, if you're going to have a professional production Odoo installation, I think it's very important that any modifications that you make, even if it's simple ones as much as uh, going in under configuration and checking some of these these items, I think that, that you need to document them. And with reporting, it's even more critical that you document your changes. So um, with that warning and that said, now before I would make any changes here, if this was a, any kind of production system, especially make a backup. Don't don't change and modify reports, um, and because uh, you can break the system, you can make it so you won't be able to print that report again until you fix things, um, and, and uh, so just be cautious. So the if you go down here now, part of the reason I showed you this was so that we could stay here on this tab and pull up our quotation here that we want to print over and over again so I brought this here so that you know we can just hit print just like that and we'll get it we'll get another one to look at now let's jump in back to this tab up at the top left tab and we can go back and we're gonna go to sales order and you'll notice it says report type is PDF and if instead we change this from edit we say HTML instead of PDF and, and I save. Now when we go to um, quotations and, and choose Odoo and print and I have to get this on the screen you'll notice that we don't get a PDF anymore but we get an HTML version. Um, it doesn't look any better but it's an HTML version of, of it um, and uh, uh, what we're going to do now is show you how you can make simple edits on this um, using using the uh, web editor that's built into the report generator. So I'm going to go here under settings and type in website and we'll install the website builder. Now again this comes with a word of caution it, it can be deceptive uh, that you can edit reports using the method I'm going to show you trust me it's very little you can edit here but uh, it, it's probably good that you know you can do it so I'm gonna go back to sales and um, sales order or quotations and we're gonna once again print and I wish I would remember my where, where I'm putting this but it keeps moving it off my screen um, you'll notice now there's this edit button right here and if I click edit now I can go into the code here and actually this template and actually make some changes so let's change this to, to say quote number like that and instead of salesperson we'll use a little more progressive talk team member and um, you know we we'd probably like to get that date uh, that time off there. You, usually having a, the date and time, the actual time on there, maybe that's not so important, or maybe you'd even want to format it to take the seconds off there at least. Um, but really, when it comes to changes, you're not going to be able to add in new columns using this. You're not going to be able to remove a column like um, 
for example, we might not have line item taxes uh, for some businesses. A lot of businesses, uh, at least, uh, they might not have where every line item would have a different tax. They're going to tax all their, their products at the same rate. Or they wouldn't necessarily want to show the taxes for each line item on a quote, even even though it's underneath it's calculate the tax at, uh, uh, taxes by line item. The, for their business purposes, they'd be perfectly fine with dropping this column out and just having the taxes show here in, in the total. Now it is kind of interesting that you might want to ha have a consideration here that somebody could uh, change this a little bit easier and then print it than perhaps they could if they had to export it in the PDF and then open up um, Adobe Acrobat and make changes there and, and then print it. Um, but um, you know that's just something to be aware of that you can actually go in here and change these quantities like this to 21 and I hit save just like that. So now we change the label here and I change the quantity to 21. Now if I go forward and back we're just going to show you it actually did change the quantity to 21. That's right the changes you made to the report will actually change on here well, uh, just so you can see it again. To, uh, CN is believing here I can hit edit and change my widget you'll notice that I can make this change right here in the HTML editor hit save and um, go back now it doesn't change you don't see it yet but if you go off the record and back on you'll see that it changed the description right inside the quote now depending upon your position on this this might be a great feature it might be very scary to you uh, but you always have the option to turn the HTML off I was showing you the HTML on so it's a little bit easier to see um, so you can see some of the basic edits that you can make here here by choosing edit now unfortunately um, unlike the rest of the web builder, okay, well, I guess it's not so unfortunately. You can go right up here under uh, HTML editor and see uh, see this uh, is more the the high level report or the the wrapper around it. And um, if uh, if I look at this, um, you'll, you'll see that there's no real way to get to the document here. Um, there's uh, they have different parts of it. There's the footer. Here's where it shows the logo. The the editor um, components at the top. So so there's you can look at different parts of this. You can see the style sheet, and you can make the changes here and save them back in. Um, but the one thing that I've been unable to find here is an easy way to get to the actual document itself. So we're gonna we're gonna show you how to do that now. And so, if I jump back over here to our other tab, you'll notice here um, we're at, on the same page where I changed the report type to HTML. If you look across here, you'll see that there's a search associated Q Web View. So I'm going to click that, and you'll notice that there's actually two sequences or two views for this report. And the first one is the one that we saw when we went into the into the HTML editor. And this uh, uh, basically is kind of a wrapper around the document that it's really going to demonstrate. And you can notice that it's calling a translate underscore doc here. So it basically allows um, the report engine to do a document translation for, to, into the language that is uh, the current users using. Or the partner ID, most likely, I would say this would be the partner ID associated with the sales order. So if you're printing a quotation for someone um, that you know that, that uh, in in French or in German or Spanish, uh, it would a actually change the the quote based upon uh, the language. So where would be the question a lot of people would have. So the full document is in this next view. 
here under um, the the report sale order document. Now this is the full structure that shows you the report and here would, would be an example of where you could make a backup of this yourself by doing a duplicate. So by duplicating this and just say like backup for example and hit and save. This could be one way that inside of the of of this that you're keeping uh, track of it. And after I made that change, we're just going to make sure um, that that didn't break anything here. So we go back to this one and hit print. And sure enough, despite the fact it keeps moving it uh, to the left, uh, it's it's still printing uh, the document fine. And so. Um, I'm a believer in that if you make a change, you do anything, even if it seems small, and like in this case, just duplicating this, it's probably a good idea to, to test uh, any process it might affect. Now, you'll notice that it doesn't have an external ID defined here where um, this one does. And so that's the reason why that there is no conflict or it, there's no ambiguity as to which report it is going to it is going to pull it's uh, uh, inside of the sales order system looking for this external ID and so um, you'll keep that in mind that we we now have a backup of, of the of the reports you could go in here if you mess the other one up edit it go select it all use like a, a control a um, the select all on in Windows. I'm sure there's a Mac and Mac equivalent to select all, and you know copy it into your clipboard. Um, you know you can do this to do a copy into your clipboard. Now you could go back into this view and paste it back in. If it, it you know so there is a way within the database here where you can kind of create uh, backups of of your views and keep them in case uh, you break something. Um, kind of your own lightweight versioning system, I guess you could say. Um, the important thing to remember is there's no permanence outside of this database. That when you make a new database, you're not going to get these views, and you'll have to copy them and manage them uh, through the through these interfaces. Um, this could be uh, a good option for end users if you're if you're a developer and you're building reports a lot. You're going to want to take these uh, changes and roll them into a module. But let's go ahead and make a few small changes here. We talked about maybe taking the, the, the taxes out, the tax line item. So let's see how we might do that. We're going to edit this document and we're going to come down and uh, you'll notice that here there's a table and uh, they, there you define your header row with this T head and um, we have description taxes, quantity unit price, and you can notice here that you can use uh, CSS to, you know, defi uh, define the uh, the justification of it. So that so it's going to know to make quantity and unit pr unit price now right justified. Um, you can also notice that you can use groups in in these uh, groups clause to assign security uh, to a particular. Uh, head, uh, column. So that would mean that unless you're part of this this group, um, which you would not be a part of this group, if, depending on how 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 things are set up, um, or you would be, um, it'll show the, dis the 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 discount percentage. So let's just simply take this. Um, I'm sorry, the taxes line here. And we're gonna we're gonna take it out like that, and then now what you're going to have to remember is we're going to have to count basically the columns. So when we go down here to the body area the, that's defined here, we're, we have a, a, a TR, T for each. And you'll, so you'll notice, and this is, is if, if you're a developer, this will be very important. If you're more of an end user just looking to change reports, it, you're going to find um, reporting is actually a very, can be a very difficult uh, information technology uh, area to work in and so a lot of times there's this perception that uh, oh well somebody can make a report and that can be uh, more of a layman or not you don't need the same kind of levels of developer skills as you would for maybe other things 
Um, I don't necessarily believe that's true. I think reporting uh, typically is it is complex. It requires complex understanding the databases and queries. It requires you understanding the view side of things, how to present things. So when you're getting into this, remember if if you are an end user, you know keep your expectations down a little bit of what you can change. You're going to be able to make small changes. You can learn to do uh, you know some 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 cosmetic things. But um, if you're going to really make dramatic changes to reports, you're going to be thinking of yourself more as a developer and expect expect a learning curve. But with that said, I wanted to explain it. There's not a lot of magic at how this report works. Um, that this T for each, this TR T for each, O dot order line means that it's going to loop through this row all the way down to this ending TR tag. So just like as if you were going to do a for each loop in Python, QWeb is going to do a for each, and you're going to get a column, one column here, 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 and finally the subtotal column. And it, there's going to be some things in here that are going to make it obvious which columns are which. This is obviously the subtotal column. This, because it's using this field as the discount column, and so on, price unit. So, in this case, we want to get rid of the tax column. Well, I got rid of the header, so now let's get rid of the rest of it here. So we can just go into here, and I know this is the tax column. One uh, reason is because it's got tax ID here, and the other reason is it was the second uh, header or column up here, up, up here in this part of it. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of this column so we're balanced now. I'm going to hit save and when we go back over here to our other tab and uh, reprint you'll notice now that our tax column's gone we've we've removed it. So um, now that we've freed up some space here let's see how we could just add another column back in and that'll be an, a common request on sales orders would be to add some fields up here and uh, we'll look to do that and then maybe add a